Afraid of cutting an Avid? You don't have to be. It's got a steep learning curve, but you can get started pretty quickly. This region down here is your timeline. This is where you do all of your editing work. This is your source window. This is where you look through the clips that you want to put into your timeline. You can track through from the beginning to the end by using the J, K, and L keys. They rewind, pause, and play forward, respectively. If you hit the L key multiple times, you'll fast forward quickly. If you hit the J key multiple times, you'll rewind quickly. The first thing I want to do with my clip is make an in and an out marker. This determines the section of the clip that I want to bring into the timeline. And you do this using the I key to make an in point and the O key to make an out point. These icons represent your tracks and what is highlighted will come into your timeline. So for example, this will bring everything into my timeline. The video track and the two audio layers. I'm going to command Z to back up. And you'll see because I deselected the two audio tracks, I only got the video track. I'm going to focus mainly on video editing tools, but I'm going to bring the audio from that clip back in. Just to show you, if you click up here, you get access to some more audio tools. You get your solo and your mute buttons. Solo, the S, lets you listen to only the selected track, and then mute mutes a track. Then you also get these two icons, which let you see the waveforms of your audio tracks. These are very quiet clips, so you can't really see the waveforms. You can see a little bit of information toward the end here, but and a clip will bring it in a little bit, you'll really be able to see a waveform. I'm going to open up another clip now and just kind of scrub through it and find an in and out point. And now I'm going to skip ahead a bit, and I've made my selection, and now I can bring the clip into the timeline one of two ways, with either the V or the B key. So we now have a cut in our timeline, and I'm just going to get rid of the audio here and focus on video. I'll explain how I did that toward the end of the video. What we're going to do now is explain the difference between the V and the B keys for bringing a clip into the timeline. So I've got another clip selected, I'm going to turn off my audio tracks, and then I hit V. V is the splice in tool, so basically it placed the clip in between the two clips I already had in the timeline. It's the lettuce in between the two loaves of bread. Now I've hit Command Z to undo that move, and I'm going to move the playhead just to the left of my edit point, and I'm going to hit B. This overwrites a section of the timeline. So instead of putting the clip in between the two clips, what it did was it put it on top of the space that they occupied. This might be conceptually a little confusing, but I'm going to Command Z and now use V with the playhead a little to the left of the cut point. And as you can see, it's chopped things up more. Instead of just writing over the clips that were already there, it spliced into the clip. As you can see, take one is now on both sides of the clip that I just bought in. This might be a weird way of thinking about it, but imagine the sentence, I want food. If we were editing the sentence using these tools, I would use the overwrite tool to change the sentence to, I need food. I've overwritten the word wants and put in need. Now using the splice tool adds in the word more, I need more food. I haven't changed anything that already exists in the sentence, I've just spliced something into it. Overwrite and splice are essential concepts to using Media Composer, so if this doesn't really make sense, play with them, and you might get a better idea. You can see on the screen are the icons for splice in and overwrite. You can use these as opposed to the buttons on the keyboard. It's a matter of preference. So we've added things into the timeline. Now we're going to subtract things from the timeline. First thing we want to do is make an in and an out point in the timeline. I'm just going to remove this section where we pass by the wall on the left side of the frame. And our new best friends are the Z and X keys. This is what the Z key does. This is called the Lift tool. It deletes a portion of the timeline and leaves an empty space. And I'm going to Command Z and hit the X button. This is the Extract tool. It deletes a portion of the timeline but closes the gap. I'm going to lift this piece out again with the Z key, and as you can see, the in and out marks remain. We can get rid of those using the G key. 
As you can see, it works the same way in the source window. Make an in and out mark, G key removes them. Another useful tool is what might be called snapping in other programs. Hold down command when you move the playhead and it'll just connect to the beginning or end of a cut. Another important thing to note is when you make your out mark, it makes it on this secondary line on the playhead, the dotted line, not the solid line. I'm going to remove this gap now by using the extract key, X. As you can see, like over, right, and splice in, lift and extract also have buttons on the screen in case you don't like using your keyboard. But you should use your keyboard. The next area of attention are the arrow buttons and your trimming tools. You can see all of them represented over here on the left side of the screen. These buttons from top to bottom can be accessed on your keyboard by holding down shift and hitting A, S, D, and F respectively. The red arrow, like lift and overwrite, is a blunt instrument, but it's also probably your best friend if you're frustrated when you first used Avid and you couldn't just move clips around in the timeline. You can with this tool. You can turn it on and off on the left side of the screen or you can hit Shift A. The yellow arrow is a little funkier. It's more like the extract and splice in tools. It's more conceptual. I never really use it, but as you can see, when you shift a clip around with it, it moves the clips around it with it. It's a weird thing, but you can use it to adjust a clip and the clips around it contextually. Again, it's, it's a weird one. I wouldn't really encourage you to use it. There are other ways to achieve the same effect. The trim tools are much more user friendly. The red trim, which can be accessed with Shift D or the button on the left, allows you to drag out the beginning or end of a clip. And as you can see, it drags over the clip before it. So like overwrite, when you drag this trim, it overwrites what you're dragging it onto. The yellow trim can be accessed with the button on the left or with Shift F and allows you to make trims where you're only affecting the clip you're trimming. Either you're increasing or decreasing the duration of that clip. You're not affecting anything before or after it. You're just moving that clip's duration shorter or longer. You can see over here how many frames you've adjusted the clip by. And there's a more precise way to adjust this. You can use the keys on the bottom right of your keyboard from M to the slash, those four keys. The center two, comma and period, allow you to make one frame adjustments to the left or right, and then M and the slash allow you to make eight frame adjustments to the left or right. If with either of the trim tools activated, you click right in between two clips, you'll activate the trim tool, which is this purple icon that affects both sides of a clip. Also, you'll see if you have both trim tools activated, if you hover just to the side of an edit, if you hover upwards, you'll get the red trim. If you hover downwards, you'll get the yellow trim. So you can just click there to activate those tools. With the trim tool activated, you can go over here and select either the A side or the B side of the edit and make changes specifically to either one. And it's good to go back and forth and tweak it so that you can get your edit looking just right. Another useful tool is the match frame, which allows you to bring up a clip that you already have in your timeline back in your source. If you go over here to the hamburger menu and click on this icon, that's the match frame. As you can see, it's opened the clip in the source. Your original endpoint is still there in case you want to reference it. As you can see, the two match up perfectly. Now, what else is good? Uh, let's say you just want to make a cut. This button right here, add edit. There you go, you've made a little cut. And if you use the red arrow, you can click on this and just hit backspace, and it's gone. Pretty easy. All of these concepts that we've worked on can also be applied to audio. So I'm gonna bring in some clips here that have audio on them. And all the types of cuts and lifts and extracts and splices can be done the same way with audio. 
But one thing that's very useful to do is um, when you have a cut, you might want to fade between the two audios, a crossfade. And you click on this icon here, and then you get this window. You can choose which tracks you want it to apply to. You don't want it on your video track because then you'll get like a you know video crossfade, and eh, that doesn't look so great. You can choose if you want it on the beginning, the end, or the middle of the cut. You can choose the number of frames. For just like a tiny little blend, if you want to get rid of a pop, you could just do two frames, and uh, that's a very useful tool. If you go up to your settings, and then you scroll down to keyboard, double click that, you can look at how your keyboard is mapped. You can just hover over anything, see the explanation of what that button does, and if you hold down shift, you can see the secondary keyboard that's available to you. This is a great functionality to eventually get acquainted with because it allows you to really customize Avid your own way. Command 3 opens up the command palette, which gives you access to the whole kitchen cupboard. You have all the tools here, and uh, you can just drag them onto the keyboard image onto any key, and that's, that's how you customize it. You just make sure you're set to button-to-button -button reassignment. That lets you reassign the buttons with the buttons. One thing I like to do is I like to find match frame and put that on my H key, because what's normally mapped onto the H key is not something that I ever use. And it's as easy as that. Now with the command palette, if you choose active palette, it makes it so that when you click on any of these buttons, it just happens immediately. You click match frame, match frame happens. And uh, that's it. Okay, bye-bye. Get editing. Have fun.